And in our top business story, as we heard earlier in the bulletin, the UAE economy is the highest rated in the Arab world after it leapt seven places to 12th in a global competitiveness index of 144 countries. The jump is by far the largest movement in the top 30 positions of the World Economic Forum's annual global competitiveness index and leaves the UAE sandwiched between Nordic powerhouses Denmark and Norway and breathing down the necks of Sweden and the UK. The rapid climb shows how far the UAE has come since the low point of the global financial crisis of 2007-09 when it languished in the 37th position. The top 10 positions in the latest listings are occupied by advanced Western economies and three Asian tigers. Switzerland, the home of the World Economic Forum, tops the ranking for the sixth consecutive year with Singapore in second place for the fourth time running and the U.S. creeping back up to the third slot as it recovers from the financial crisis that sent it down the rankings in 2009. The other top 10 positions go to Finland, Germany, Japan, Hong Kong, the Netherlands, the UK and Sweden. The other five members of the GCC have not fared as well as the UAE. Since last year, Qatar has fallen three places to 16th and Saudi Arabia four places to 24. Kuwait is down four to 40th. Bahrain slips one spot to 44th and Oman is down 13 places to 46th. The next nearest Arab state is Jordan in 64th, followed by Morocco 72nd, Algeria 79th, Tunisia 87th, Egypt 119th, Libya 126th and Yemen 142nd. The World Economic Forum defines competitiveness as the institutions, policies and factors that determine the level of productivity and measures the competitiveness of 144 countries against a dozen pillars. These include the quality of its institutions, infrastructure, healthcare and primary education, the efficiency of its labour market and its technological readiness, business sophistication and level of innovation. Abu Dhabi International Airport has, has registered a 21.7% increase in passenger traffic in July, according to the latest figures released by the airport operator. Uh, Abu Dhabi Airport said in a statement that a total of 1,703,995 passengers passed through the airport in July, compared with 1,399,695 in the same month of 2013. In July, the top five routes from Abu Dhabi International Airport were London Heathrow, Doha, Manila, Bangkok and Jeddah, accounting for 15% of all traffic, traffic aircraft movements. Aircraft movements reached 13,188, representing a 16.1% increase over the 11,355 movements reported in July 2013. Cargo activity was also on the rise in July, recording 67,456 tonnes handled a 5.7% increase compared to the same month last year. Rents in some areas in Dubai are falling, according to the latest rent index figures released by the Real Estate Regulatory Authority. The figures show that the rents, when compared to the last update in May, have fallen in downtown Dubai, where rates are dropping by between 6% for studios and 10% for one beds. Rents in Dubai Marina remained stable for one and two beds, while studios witnessed a drop of up to 8%. In the more affordable areas like International City, there were drops in rent of between 8% for two bedrooms and 12% for studios. Discovery Gardens also saw a drop in studio rents of 10% and one beds of 8.5%, while two beds remained steady. In both JLT and Silicon Oasis, rents remained steady. At present, Islamic finance is only 1.3% of the total finance market, according to experts. This is expected to improve, as Muslims make up 20% of the world's population. Financial centres, including Paris, London, New York and Hong Kong, have announced interest in becoming the Islamic finance capital of the world. The Indonesian government recently raised $1.5 billion worth of Islamic bonds yesterday, which attracted over $10 billion worth of books ordered. While Britain became the first Western country to launch a £200 million sukuk, which are Sharia-compliant Islamic certificates or bonds in June this year. The partner and head of the banking and finance group at Taylor Wessing, Habibullah, says there is a huge opportunity for Islamic finance to grow and become dominant over conventional funding. And Dubai will become the global hub for Islamic finance. We are a, a financial centre ourselves. 
and there is an expertise and a quality of professional here which, uh, rec which suggests to me that Dubai will become the Islamic finance capital of the world. Everyone's focused on 2020 and we in particular as a firm are very involved in some of the schemes uh, connected with 20, uh, Expo 2020 and one of the desires that I've seen is uh, to structure transactions on a Sharia compliant basis for Expo 2020. So yes, I can see that being a, a big uh, driver for more Islamic finance. Sharia compliant for finance means it is consistent with principles wherein giving and taking interest, investing in prohibited activities such as tobacco and alcohol, as well as taking excessive risks, are not allowed. Habibullah says the interest is definitely growing, but the challenge in understanding the principles and structure behind it remains. In an effort to address this, Taylor Wessing created Murshid, a guide to Islamic finance transactions available in hard copy and ebook versions. And our intention is to, to demystify Islamic finance, to make the structures more available to, to not just practitioners, but to lawyers, bankers, accountants, whoever's invol involved in the financial world. Many of our clients are involved in Islamic finance, but they are quite often not Muslim. Quite often they are Westerners who have products which they'd like to open up to Westerners, but also to Muslims. And for that reason, they will structure transactions on a Sharia-compliant basis.